Okay, if you already know this, I'll be surprised. Research shows that the dust in our homes is hormonally active. I know, what does that mean? Well, it means that when dust gets in our bodies, it can act like estrogen, testosterone, and other hormones. This Harvard study by Dr. Anna Young et al. found that when you take human cells and expose them to indoor dust, the cells behave as if they have too much estrogen, not enough testosterone, or not enough thyroid hormone. So what exactly is in dust that makes it potentially affect our hormones? Well, as you may have guessed, it's chemicals from the products we buy, and it's building materials, furniture, etc. Specifically, these chemicals include PBDEs and OPEs, which are mostly flame retardants, and also PFOS, which are known as forever chemicals. They're used in coatings that are resistant to water, heat, oil, and stains. In the study by Young, all dust samples from 46 building spaces were hormonally active, and the higher the concentrations of flame retardants and forever chemicals in the dust, the more it mimicked hormones. So let's actually look at an example of how structurally similar these chemicals are to our own hormones. This is PBDE 73, and this is our own thyroid hormone T4. These regions are clearly similar. Thyroid hormone does have this hydroxyl group and PBDE doesn't, but the crazy thing is once PBDE enters the body, our metabolic systems add a hydroxyl group like that one to PBDE to make it more water soluble. So that unfortunately causes it to become even more similar to thyroid hormone and increases its binding potency 1600 times. So there's some of the biochemistry for you. Okay, but how much dust can actually get into our bodies? It's not like we eat it except we do. Apparently, adults accidentally consume about 45 milligrams of house dust every day, and sometimes it's even more, up to 100 milligrams. To give you a reference point, the recommended daily amount of sodium is 2,000 milligrams, and we consume 2 to 5% of that in dust. So how exactly do we accidentally eat dust? Well, it builds up on our hands as we go about our days, and then when we touch our lips or eat food with our hands, we transfer it to our mouths. Of course we eat hormonally active dust, right? Living on this planet in 2024 is already so ridiculous. At this point, I'm not even surprised by that, are you? How else do harmful chemicals and dust get into our bodies? Through the air we breathe, obviously and also through our skin. Yes, through our skin. Our skin is not like a Teflon coating, it's, it's permeable. I'll talk about that in a future video. Oh wait, what's that? Did you think I was just gonna tell you some depressing information and then end the video? That's not the way I do things. Instead, I'll tell you what to do about it. Here's how to reduce your exposure to house dust. One, obviously wash your hands regularly. Two, use a HEPA vacuum at least once a week. I have a YouTube video on why it should be a HEPA vac in particular. Three, the following tip is especially helpful for those who are environmentally sensitive. After vacuuming, clean your floors with microfiber mops and clean other horizontal surfaces with microfiber pads. This might seem like overkill, but it's actually really quick, not too expensive, and it makes a huge difference in air quality. I'm gonna do a future video on how exactly to do this properly and the science behind why you should, so make sure you're subscribed. Thank you to Harvard professor Dr. Joe Allen and his book Healthy Buildings for inspiring this video. Share this video with a friend who might find it interesting that dust is hormonally active. See ya.